In the last video, we were introduced to hyperbolic functions, and we saw that the standard form for a hyperbolic function was y is equal to a over x plus q. We also saw that the most simple hyperbolic function, y is equal to 1 over x, looked like this, where we had two asymptotes. x is equal to 0 was our vertical asymptote, and y is equal to 0 was our horizontal asymptote. And we saw that the hyperbolic functions that we deal with were going to be variations of these two curves that varied depending on our value of a and our value of q. We saw that if a was positive, if a was positive, our two curves would be in quadrants 1 and 3. And if A was negative, our two curves would be in quadrants 2 and 4. We also saw that our value of Q was going to represent our vertical shift. So if we had a Q greater than 0, our new horizontal asymptote would be above the x-axis, and our curves would look like this, depending on whether our A was positive or negative. If our Q was less than zero, we would have a downwards shift, and our curves would look like this depending on whether A was positive or negative. We saw that in grade 10, our vertical asymptote is always going to be X is equal to zero, and our horizontal asymptote is always going to be Y is equal to Q. So our value of Q is going to determine our horizontal asymptote, whereas our vertical asymptote is always going to be x is equal to zero. And in this lesson, we're going to look at an example of a hyperbolic function, and we're going to use what we learned in the last video to graph that function. Let's say our function is f of x is equal to 2 over x minus 1. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to try and find our intercepts. Let's try and find our x and y intercepts, which is the same thing that we did in both linear functions and quadratic functions. So we should be familiar with finding our intercepts. So let's start out by finding our x-intercept. Our x-intercept is going to be when y is equal to 0, and if we were to set y equal to 0, f of x is equal to 0. So we can set our entire function equal to 0, and that would mean that 2 over x minus 1 is equal to 0. And we can bring this minus 1 to this side, which means that we would have 2 over x is equal to 1, and if we're trying to solve for x, we can cross multiply, and we're going to get that x is equal to 2. So this is going to be our x-intercept. Our x-intercept coordinate is going to be when x is equal to 2 and when y is equal to 0. Now if we were to try and find our y-intercept, we know that to find our y-intercept, we have to set x equal to 0. But that is where we encounter a big problem. If we were to set x equal to 0, we would be dividing by 0, and that is going to be undefined. So we actually do not have a y-intercept in this case. We only have an x-intercept, and our y-intercept is undefined. And that makes sense because we can remember that x is equal to 0 is always going to be our vertical asymptote. So it makes sense that we're not going to be able to find a value for y when x is equal to 0, because x equals 0 is our vertical asymptote. So let's make a note of that. x is equal to 0 is our vertical asymptote. And now the next thing that we want to do is find our horizontal asymptote. So what is our horizontal asymptote? Well, we'll remember from our last video that our horizontal asymptote is going to be y is equal to q. y is equal to q is our horizontal asymptote. And what is our value for q? Our value for q in this case is negative 1. This is our q. So y is equal to negative 1 is going to be our horizontal asymptote. So now we found our x-intercept, 
and we found our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Now the next thing that we want to do is make a note of which quadrants our two curves are going to lie in. And we'll remember that that is going to depend on our value for A. This is our A over here, 2 is our A, and we can see that this is positive, and that means that our two curves are going to be in quadrants 1 and in quadrants 3. So our A is positive, which means that we're going to be in quadrants 1 and 3. Now this information is enough to give us a general idea of what our two curves are going to look like. But if we want to be a bit more precise, it can be quite helpful for us to determine a few points in our graph so that we can be more precise and not just sketch a general idea of what our graph was to look like. So in addition to gathering this information about our function, it's beneficial to make a little xy table. So here we can have our values of x and our values for y. And here we can write down different input values for x and determine what our function is going to be, what our y values are going to be for those values of x so that we can get a more precise idea of what our graph looks like. And because we have this information, we only need two or three points in order to have a pretty precise idea of what our curves are going to look like. Let's start out with negative 2. If x is equal to negative 2, y is going to be equal to negative 2 as well. Because 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. If x was equal to negative 1, y is going to be equal to negative 3. If x is equal to 1, y is going to be equal to 1 as well. And if x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0. So now we have enough information to draw a graph of this function. We can draw out a Cartesian plane right here. So here we have our Cartesian plane. And the first thing that we want to do is we need to put in our two asymptotes. Whenever you're dealing with hyperbolic functions, the first thing that you need to do when you are sketching out your graphs is to put in your two asymptotes. And we are going to depict our asymptotes as dotted lines. So we know that our vertical asymptote is x is equal to zero, and that is just our y-axis. So our y-axis is going to be x is equal to zero, and that is our vertical asymptote. And I'm not actually going to draw in the vertical asymptote in a dotted line because it is just our axis. So we can just see that there. Now we have to put in our horizontal asymptote. Our horizontal asymptote is y is equal to negative one. So y is equal to negative one is this point here. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be a line that goes across here. So here in purple, we have our horizontal asymptote. y is equal to negative one. So we've got our x-intercept. Our x-intercept is when x is equal to two and y is equal to zero. So let's start by putting that in. Here we have x is equal to two and y is equal to zero. So we're going to have a point over here. Now we have some points that we can plot here. So when x is equal to negative two, y is equal to negative two. So here we have x is equal to negative 2, and here we have y is equal to negative 2. So we have a point there. When x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 3. So here we have x is equal to negative 1, and here we have y is equal to negative 3. So we've got a point there. Now when x is equal to 1, y is equal to 1. So here we have a point. When x is equal to 2, y is equal to 0. We've already plotted that. That was our x-intercept. And now we can sketch out these graphs. We know because our a is positive, our curves are going to be in quadrant 1 and in quadrant 3. And if we were to join these dots while also recognizing that we have an asymptote here and an asymptote here, we can very accurately sketch this graph. 
our curves are going to look like this. And again, I apologize if this doesn't look symmetric because I've drawn this by hand, but these two curves are meant to be symmetric. And we can see as we go further this way, we're going to get closer and closer and closer to this y is equal to negative one line, but it's never actually going to touch or cross that line. And the same goes for our x is equal to zero line. This is going to go closer and closer, but is never going to actually touch it. And we're going to see the same thing with this line here and with this line here. And this is the method that we are going to use when we are graphing any hyperbolic function. You're going to first make note of your a value. Is it positive or is it negative? If it's positive, we know that our two curves are going to be in quadrants one and three. And if it's negative, we know that we're going to have our two curves in quadrants two and four. The next thing that we want to make a note of is our intercepts. We can calculate our x-intercept by setting y equal to zero. That's going to give us one of our points in our curve. And then we're going to find our asymptotes. We're going to have a vertical asymptote at x is equal to zero. And our horizontal asymptote is going to be the line y is equal to q. So whatever your value of q is, that is going to be your horizontal asymptote. And you'll see that depending on your value of q, that's going to shift your curves downwards or upwards if you were comparing it to your simple y is equal to 1 over x graph. So here, because our q is negative 1, we've had a downward shift to our graphs. We've almost shifted our two axes downwards. So we can think of y is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to 0 as our new axes.